Turn on outside lights. All right, turning on outside lights. Okay, cool. Activate camera privacy mode. All right, I am turning off the inside cameras. Hey everyone, Ryan again. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to integrate some of your WISE products into Home Assistant. Now I say some because currently there isn't an easy way to integrate the camera's video feed into Home Assistant. However, using the by using the custom component that I'm gonna show you today, you're able to bring in things like locks, lights, switches, and even some of your camera sensors like motion sensor and being able to power on and off the camera into Home Assistant. Now, I know everybody wants their WISE cameras integrated into Home Assistant, and I have kind of a preview of a hacky way of making it work using an application called TinyCam on Android. Now, unfortunately, this is Android only, so your only options are to use a dedicated Android device, like a tablet, or install a virtual Android emulator on a machine or in a virtual environment. At the end of the video, I'm gonna show you a preview of this. So if, ever, if you're interested in seeing the full version of this video, please let me know in the comments below. The integration that we're gonna look at today was developed by GitHub user Joshua Mulkin, and it's been quite a popular repo on GitHub. So like I said before, the limitations of this project are, it can only be used to control things like bulbs, sensors, switches, power control on cameras, and motion sensors on cameras. In addition, you can also control your WISE locks if you happen to have those. So this integration is limited to pretty much everything else that you can do with the WISE system, with the exception of video feeds. So if you have locks, you can unlock and lock them, change the status of bulbs or switches. You can also monitor the motion sensor and power controls for your cameras itself. So like any of these unofficial integrations, they're based on a kind of a custom API, so it could break at any time. So make sure that you keep this integration up to date if you rely on it for your standard automations. All right, so there are a couple things that we need to know before we get started. The first one is to set this up, you're gonna to have to have Hacks installed, the Home Assistant Community Store. If you watch my previous video, which I've got a link for up here in the cards, you can go back and watch a quick video on how to set up Hacks. It really only takes a few minutes and uh, it's an extremely powerful application to have installed in your Home Assistant instance. So make sure you have that done before you proceed to the next step. The second thing we need to look at is that you need to have your two-factor authentication disabled for your WISE account. Now, this is never usually a good recommendation to have two-factor turned off. However, because of the way this integration works, you need to have it disabled so that way it can do a simple exchange of username and password. So I'd recommend to go ahead and have a long password set up for your WISE account. Now with those out of the way, let's jump into the install. So let's get started. We'll jump into Home Assistant and then we'll head over to Hacks to get the integration installed. So now that we're in our Home Assistant instance, let's click on Hacks and we'll go to Integrations and Explore and Add Repositories. Now if you're a search for, for the repository in here, you'll notice it doesn't come up. That's because you have to add it in as a custom repository. So to do that, we need to pop back into the repo, scroll down and you'll see here under instructions, he's got a URL here that we need to add to the custom repository. So we'll copy that URL, pop back into Home Assistant, click the three dots, and go to custom repositories here uh, at the bottom. To add a custom repository, you can click here and then hit and paste. And then for category, it's an integration, and then hit add. All right, so now that we've added it in there, we can hit X, click on explore and add repositories. And now if we type in Wise, it'll show up on the list. So we'll click on that and then click, click install this repository in Hacks. Click install. And now you see that it's available and pending restart. So let's go ahead and go to configuration, server controls, and restart. All right, now that Home Assistant's back up, let's go ahead and go back to configuration, integrations. Click add integration. And we'll type in WISE. Click on WISE Home Assistant integration. And it's gonna prompt you for your username and password. So make sure, like we said before, you have two-factor disabled and you wanna put in your username and password here. So. We'll skip through this part and that's it. So it may take it a minute to refresh all of your devices that are currently available by the API, but once it's finished, you can click the number of devices here and then it'll take you into everything that's available in the integration. So in my case, all of my cameras are in here, plus my outdoor plugs as well. So, so if you have an outdoor, one of their outdoor plugs, it'll create actually three entities one is a master to control everything, to turn on and off the entire plug. Then you'll have one for each of the individual plugs. For cameras, um, you'll notice two entities that appear per camera. One is a motion sensor. So a, a standard motion sensor just uses the motion detection on the camera. And then it has a power control. So this is like if you notice in the WISE app, there's a list of your cameras you can hit on or off to turn them off for, uh, for privacy reasons. 
this gives you that option to do that in a home assistant. So you can easily set up some sort of um, schedule that says, hey, when you get home, turn off my inside cameras if you're concerned about that. So there you go. I don't have any bulbs or locks to show as an example what that would look like, but you can look through the repo and it'll show you the instructions for that, but it sets those up like it would with any other integration. So very simple, very quick and easy to set up and very powerful. Um, I use this to schedule my front and back lights to turn off and on. It's super nice to bring that integration in a home assistant and check those statuses and also control them remotely. Now that you know how to get all your sensors, lights and locks in home assistant, the last piece is the part I promised at the beginning, which is a kind of a preview of how I am able to pull in my most of my camera feeds for my wise cameras in Home Assistant, even without having RTSP enabled, which is not available in the new uh, version three camera. So what I use actually is a Kindle Fire. Uh, this is a Kindle Fire that I use as a wall display um, downstairs in my kitchen. And it runs an application called Tiny Cam. This is available both on the Google Play Store and on the and, and on the Amazon App Store. So you can take a Kindle Fire right out of the box and install this application on it. There's a free and a paid version, and I have the paid version, so, I, so I'm not 100% sure if the web server is available on the free version or not, but the kind of quick steps on how to do this is, first of all, you install and set up the Tiny Cam application on your Android device of choice, and then you can go in and configure it for the Wise. So actually you can select Wise as an option in the dropdown, and I'll leave a link here below to an article that they have on how to set up WISE cameras in the application. But the key component is once you get the cameras set up in the WISE app on TinyCam, is you go on and you enable the web server. Once this web server is enabled, then it's just as easy as going out to the URL that you find in the app, adding in the username and password, and then you can see all of your camera feeds in that app itself. Then to get the path that you need for Home Assistant, just right click on it, go to inspect, and scroll down and look for this section right here where you can grab the URL, the token, and the camera name out of there. You can then parse that together and use that to pull down a standard uh, MJPEG camera in Home Assistant and then display your cameras in there. Now I will say this isn't 100% reliable because of the device that it runs on. Uh, like I said, I'm using a kind of a moderately old uh, Kindle Fire 7 inch. So it's not the most powerful thing in the world. I have plans to set up a virtual Android machine on my Proxmox server and give it a little bit more RAM so it's a little bit more stabilized. Um, the other option too is you can pay for their cloud subscription, which does give you the option of paying per Wise camera. And then all that's hosted in the cloud and then they give you a URL that you can pull from and be able to grab it and integrate it from there. So. I hope those little details were helpful. If you want a full breakdown video, please let me know in the comments below and I'll kind of step through how to do that um, in a more complete sense, installing the application, configuring the web server and grabbing all the bits and pieces. So if you'd like to see that again, please let me know in the comments below. Well, I hope this short video was helpful. Um, it's really nice to be able to pull these sensors and switches into your home assistant instance, set up for some more automation. So uh, if you did like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I hope to have some more content coming out throughout the rest of the summer. Thanks for joining us on this week's video and I hope you have a great rest of your week.